Well, welcome in here. Now the uh, final Monday of uh, November here. We've got plenty of college basketball coming up this week, starting uh, with a schedule today of some intriguing matchups. In fact, uh, we got six total that we're going to talk about here. Three big game breakdowns, three best bets on the Monday slate. And it's uh, another three. Three of the best at Wager Talk are going to be doing it here as we welcome back in Drew Martin in the house. BP. Ready to roll, as is Jeff Michaels on this slate of games here. Uh, we got one of those uh, big uh, ACC, SEC clashes, I think, coming up. A couple of great tournaments coming up this week. But for the stragglers that are left playing on a Monday, we are going to kick it <laughs> off here on a Cyber Monday, in fact. And we'll get to that in a minute here. Uh, Drew is going to kick us off and talk a little bit about uh, Oakland taking on Xavier in a big matchup coming up, uh, I think, on one of the earlier games here tonight. So what are we looking at here, Drew? Sure, Joe. I mean, this is, uh, yeah, 630, a little happy hour special, top of the card, first college basketball game for Cyber Big Monday tonight. We get the Horizon League in the Big East going at it in Cincinnati, Ohio, with the Oakland Grizzlies and the Xavier Musketeers. We are seeing Xavier, what, minus 14 in the hook, minus 15 out there, Joe. 149 and a half being the total. So the market telling us there's going to be a lot of scoring. And I actually have it as Xavier doing most of the scoring. Um, when you look at, you know, kind of when they were priced in this range, I call it, you know, say 12 to, to higher as the favorite. I like to go back and look how the team did covering those point spreads. And sure enough, Xavier has kind of been running up the score, if you will. So I like this profile. They beat Bryant 100 to 75. They actually beat St. Mary's, a better St. Mary's team, at least power rated than we'll see from this Oakland squad. They held them to just 49 points, under a half a hundred. That's impressive on the defensive side, winning that game 66 to 49, and also knocking off Jacksonville 79 to 56. So they are covering these point spreads at a pretty good rate. They did, however, fall short against Robert Morris, but that was the first game of the season, so I sometimes pump the brakes when factoring that in a bunch. Also keep in mind, guys, you know, this Oakland team, not all that great out the gate, so I think they're going to struggle here on the road. Um, overall, Joe, it's not one of the the top games of the card here. I'll get to that in uh, in 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 best bets in just a second but hey if you're looking for something in the happy hour uh, time slot this is a national televised game on fs1 i laid it here with xavier uh find the 14 in the hook it's minus 15 is the consensus line but i think the musketeers grab this and win by 20 plus points joe yeah expect uh expect them blow out uh here with xavier expect them to get it done like they uh, usually do against inferior competition so good way to start off the day here at a 6 30 uh tip off here and next up brian power he's going to talk about another game maybe flying under the radar here with northwestern taking on northern illinois here's a shocker for you uh what are we looking at with uh with northwestern uh, here uh how how are you lining this one up against your northern illinois huskies well, no one loves a good straggler quite like me, Joe. So Monday's an A-OK -okay card as far as I'm concerned. And spoiler alert, a theme for my plays today is going to be I disagree with the market. And we've seen mm. the market come in on Northwestern here. And I don't really understand why, to be quite honest with you. It might have something to do with the fact that they have a rest advantage, a pretty substantial rest advantage here over Northern Illinois. But this early in the season, do we think that matters that much? Could it be a little rust? Could it work against Northwestern? They haven't played in over a week, and I'm really willing to just kind of disregard the rest advantage because Northwestern's facing a Northern Illinois team, Joe, that is playing very, very well since losing the season opener by 22 at Marquette, and there's no shame there. As a matter of fact, Northern Illinois still covered the spread in that game. Uh, the Huskies have won five in a row, three of those wins, as underdogs, they beat DePaul on Saturday. That was the most recent win. They were three-and-a-half-point dog there, and they dominated from the opening tip. There was nothing phony whatsoever about that result. They led by as many as 24, never trailed. This is a team that has had four different leading scorers in its six games. So, you know, they're getting a lot of production from different guys. They averaged 1.2 points per possession 
in that win over DePaul. And, you know, they put up 98 on Little Rock, 91 on Appalachian State. This is an offense that has shot well the last two years. And <laughs> here's a trend for you. Since the start of 2021, NIU is 21, or pardon me, 27 and 11 against the number in true road games. So they've been quite profitable. Joe on the highway, 3-0, and as a matter of fact, this season. And back to Northwestern, they play really slow. Ken Palm has them bottom seven and adjusted tempo, which just isn't conducive to winning by margin. Matter of fact, you look at Northwestern's results this year, they have yet to win by more than 11 points, as a matter of fact. So uh, I don't know if people are just looking at Northwestern off a loss. It's first loss of the season, 66-57 to Mississippi State and thinking bounce back. But I just think it's too many points. Give me Northern Illinois here, Joe. Two of Northwestern's four wins, by the way, by five or less. All right. That's the way to do it then. Uh, looking at the uh, the dog here tonight against Northwestern. And it is Cyber Monday, by the way. Those of you joining us here on this, uh, on this Cyber Monday, you can enjoy a great opportunity of getting three months all access for less than 47 bucks a week right now. It's good through the end of today. Take advantage. Every sport, every pick from any one of these guys, or hell, all three if you want there, for less than 47 bucks a week. That's 90 days of all access. Partner up with them as we head into, of course, the holiday season. And we welcome in Jeff Michaels to the house, ready to roll. Jeff continuing to rock, right? 10-1 the last three days. Got a big 5% NFL best bet here tonight. Be a good time to hop on board there, take advantage of the Cyber Monday deal, but talk to us about another game a lot of people have eyes on. A couple of top 25 teams with uh, St. Mary's in Utah getting ready to go at it here tonight, Jeff. Who do you like in this one? Yeah, you know, it, St. Mary's was already mentioned once in this game and not for the best reasons in their stance, obviously, but, you know, I really think that this game comes down to two things, three-point shooting and rebounding. And I'm giving the edge to Utah here. I'm back in Utah in this one. You know, both teams are co coming off a, a tough stretch. I mean, you lost the back-to-back losses, but those did come against Houston and St. John's, so two quality teams. St. Mary's has lost three out of their last four. You know, they lost a bad one to Weber State, but they lost to San Diego State and Xavier, who are obviously top-quality teams. But, you know, both of these teams are coming in well-tested, and neither have really responded all that great, obviously. But both are coming in in the top 25% of the nation in strength of schedule. So definitely playing some of the harder teams already and getting ready for games like this. But you look at Utah, you know, they've definitely had the better offense here, and their defense has still been impressive. You know, the Utes, their top 50 in effective field goal percentage – but they're even better from three-point range. They're shooting almost 39% as a unit, and that's definitely been an area that St. Mary's has struggled to defend. And Utah's one of the best passing teams in the country, too, not to mention you add that in with a fast-tempo offense. And getting that ball moving is definitely hard to stop. You look at St. Mary's, though, they do have this slightly better defense between the two teams, but their offense has has obviously struggled as you've already heard once getting held under 50 points against Xavier. But you know, the, the biggest thing, despite being tested for St. Mary's this season, this is arguably the best offense that they've seen to date, but no question it's the best three point shooting offense that they've seen so far. And with their struggles there, I really think Utah has the edge on that three point line. And one of the biggest ways that St. Mary's has actually had an advantage in some of these games has been their height edge and their offensive rebounding numbers specifically. But they don't have the height advantage in this one against Utah. And Utah has been one of the best in defensive rebounding percentage. So I think Utah holds the edge on both of those. And I'm rolling with the Utes in this one tonight, taking the dog here too. All right, expecting the Utes to continue to roll on. 11 o'clock Eastern time tip. A little late night uh, special there. If maybe Monday night football doesn't do it for you, you got yourself a little West Coast uh, college hoops here. And now we've got three best bets coming your way. But again, if you're new to us here at Wager Talk TV, 
College basketball is what you like. College basketball is what we deliver here. So go ahead, hit the subscribe button now. Hit that like button as well. Become part of the Wager Talk TV family as we do uh, an amazing job of creating content all week long. Suitable for everyone uh, who has an interest in whether it be college basketball, NBA, college football, conference championships coming up, and uh, NFL, NHL. We've got all the head-to-head -head matchups you need, along with best bets on all the games. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button as we head back to Drew here for a best bet on the nice slate here tonight. Nothing uh, monstrous, but some quality games to choose from here. Also a Cyber Monday and a great opportunity for you to hop on board uh, with Drew, who does have, I believe, a big college basketball best bet uh, for his clients here tonight as well as been crushing it uh, since last March there, uh, Drew, right from March Madness straight through the, the new season now, man. You've still been killing it in college hoops. Give us the best bet here and tell the folks what you got going on here tonight. Sure, Joe. Yeah, up on my page, uh, I got the big Monday cyber special uh, with the play I, I, I bet tonight. And yeah, you bring up since last March, I think I ended the season uh, like on a 6-0 and run and then out, out the gate uh, cashing some tickets. So uh, hopefully keep the good times rolling here in college hoops, guys. And I bet two games tonight. Got the uh, Cyber Monday special, the client play up. And then uh, this one, uh, Battle for New York. We're seeing Manhattan and Fordham. A couple guys in the chat box live watching, uh, asking about this game. And I'm seeing uh, what Titan CT saying, uh, maybe plus, plus 12 with the uh, – with the Jaspers of Manhattan. And to tell you the truth, I'm on the under here, Joe, and it's correlated with mm. the, uh, I guess, double digit underdog, but I took the under, I got it 134 and a half. It's since moved to 134 flat. A couple reasons why guys, first off, you can find this game on ESPN plus primetime, 7 PM Eastern battle for New York, Manhattan and Fordham. Both of these two offenses, Joe ranking near the bottom, in all division one, all, uh, I guess we're calling them FBS, not really sure, but the 360 college basketball teams, these two teams near the bottom in terms of offensive efficiency out the gate this season, actually Manhattan averaging in the low sixties when playing outside of their home venue, uh, Dratty gymnasium there, they are going to be on the road tonight. They've really struggled to score when playing on the road Fordham averaging just 58 points their last two times out. And the Rams only scored 45 points against Abilene Christian. So asking them to kind of pump up the scoreboard, I don't know that I would do that. I'd pump the brakes here, guys. They've had real trouble on the offensive side, and they're only shooting 60% from the free throw line. That's something I like to watch early in the season. If teams aren't hitting their free throws, that is a big watch out and betting them. Also, watch out and betting them towards the over because those are just free points you can kind of gain and 60%. That's one of the worst in Division One college basketball as well here, guys. So uh, we get a battle for New York, and I actually think it's a defensive battle, Joe. I'd go with the under 134. That's what I did personally here with Manhattan and Fordham, 7 p.m. Eastern tonight, guys. Bet the under. Well, looking at the under uh, in that matchup here, good stuff. Make sure you visit Drew over at his uh, page at wagertalk.com. Take advantage of that Cyber Monday Special, no coupon needed as uh, BP. Are you going against the market in your best bet as well here today? Or uh, what do you got going on for us? And tell the folks what you got available over at Wager Talk. Yeah, Joe, I am. One more time going against the market as we talk Eastern Kentucky and Troy. Even on a straggler Monday, Joe, I seem to have found the biggest straggler mm. of the bunch. Mm. But look. We got to talk about this game because someone needs to ask the question on this fine program. Why is Eastern Kentucky laying six points? I don't understand it at all. These teams are rated fairly evenly in my book. Uh, and you've got EKU off back-to-back -back outright losses in the favorite role. They lose by eight to Tennessee Martin. 11 and a half to uh, as 11 and a half point favorites to Prairie View A&M. Prairie View A&M year in, year out. As you know, Joe, one of the worst teams in the country is fat, as a matter of fact. Neither of those previous two opponents for Eastern Kentucky even make the top 230 at Ken Palm. Now, Troy, not a ton better, but neither is Eastern Kentucky. So, again, I see a pretty even matchup here where I can get six points. Uh, you know, Eastern Kentucky, their only two wins 
came against non-D1 opponents. They've allowed 72 or more in all four games this season. And in the two games they played against D1 teams, really bad offensive efficiency. Couldn't get to the rim, even at home, taking a lot of mid-range jumpers. And I think what's really disconcerting for Eastern Kentucky is you look at the box score against Tennessee Martin. You look at the box score against Prairie View a and They were behind in those games by as many as 14 and 17. They only led briefly at the start in both. They also let those two teams shoot a combined 42% from three. So Troy, who I think is due for some positive shooting regression, uh, I I think is going to make some shots here. And the thing is, even not making a ton of shots, Troy has scored 80 or more points in every game, but one, they played a very fast tempo. So that helps. But if they're, if they start running hot, shooting the ball, Joe, I, I think Troy is in really good shape and can pull the outright upset here. Keep in mind that two of their three losses were in overtime to Oregon state and Sam Houston. So this is a team that hasn't really lost by margin last time out. They won by 13 against Grambling. They just barely covered the 12 point spread. But as an underdog, we obviously don't need to worry about winning by any kind of margin. And this is just too many points, in my opinion. Troy's won 20-plus games each of the last two years. So Troy is my best bet for the show, Joe, uh, as we look to keep it rolling. Won 13 in the last 17 days. Had the 5% on the bills yesterday that cashed by just the hook. And uh, we've got NFL, NBA, and college hoops on the docket for Monday. You can get all four plays right now at my page, wt.buzz backslash pp. A lot going on there. Feels like an over uh, game as well there. But taking the dog plus six in that one. Uh, Eastern Kentucky at home taking on Troy. So we got two best bets. One more to go here with Jeff Michaels. Another game out west because uh, he just uh, doesn't feel like going to sleep apparently. Uh, so he's going to take on the Gauchos of Santa Barbara uh, looking at Fresno State. Fresno State home, small favorite uh, here on this one. Uh, so tell us, uh, what are you looking at here with uh, with this big matchup out west? Yeah, Joe, I'm looking at the snowstorm that's uh, coming into Cleveland tonight. So I, I feel like sticking to the west coast and sticking to the warm weather, you know, that some of the other guys seem to have around this panel. But, yeah, you know, you said it. I really actually went back and forth on these two games, which one was going to be my best bet because I do like that Utah game. But I'm going with Fresno State here as my best bet. And, you know, a lot of times we look at at the breakdowns of some of these teams and you're really just kind of looking at, at the best offense, best defense, and, you know, so on and so forth. But when you break down this game, I really – and looking at the difference and the advantages that Fresno state has between these matchups, you know, you see Santa Barbara, I think it's hard to argue that they do have the better offense in this matchup, but there's no question that Fresno state has the better defense. You look at what Santa Barbara's done. I mean, they're 279th in defensive efficiency this season. So definitely struggling on the defensive side of the ball. And Fresno State, you know, they have kind of relied on that defense, but there's definitely been glimmers of hope on the offensive side of the ball, too, that have really stood out. You know, they're top 20 in the country in three-point percentage. They're shooting over 40% as a unit. And as a whole, I mean, the team's top 30 in effective field goal percentage with 56% as a unit again there. But you know, I've looked, had my eye on Fresno State more than once actually this season, but one of their biggest issues offensively at least has really been the turnovers and, and they're losing the turnovers and the inability to really hold on to that ball. But you want to talk about some bad defensive numbers here. Santa Barbara forcing turnovers 358th in the country out of 363 teams. They're bottom six in turnover percentage forced. So we don't quite have to worry about that turnover issue with this Fresno State here team here, at least not as much as we have in other situations. Plus, you got Fresno State playing at home. They are the more experienced team here, too. And their two best offensive games, without question, have been their two home games. One of them, obviously, was not a D1 opponent. But they're still 2-0 straight up. They covered the one-line game, and they shot noticeably better, shooting over 50% from the field in both of those games. 
So despite the fact that Santa Barbara, you know, does have that better defense or excuse me, the better offense, you know, I think their lack of defense is really what's going to be their downfall here. And Fresno state is solid enough on both sides, I think to compete here. So minus one, I even saw some pick them prices, I believe. So maybe take a look around there, see if we can get Fresno state at a pick them, but I'm more than happy to lay the point here with the Bulldogs tonight too. Ball home favor getting it done against the Gauchos here tonight. Uh, and our friends at the Gold Sheet, well, they too have themselves a play of the day. And we'd encourage you guys to head over to goldsheet.com. Check them out if it is trends and stats and head to head matchup info you're looking for. Uh, nobody's got more of it than our friends at the Gold Sheet. It's all about knowledge, knowledge is power. It's also a hell of a way to be a profitable college basketball handicapper this time of year. And they're going to look at uh, Elon taking on Presbyterian here, laying the three, three and a half with Elon. And they're pointing out a couple of uh, interesting situations right now with these two teams. The fact that Elon is 35th in the country in effective field goal shooting, not to mention they're a top 10 team in the country in shooting the three right now. And you couple that with the fact that Presbyterian has played literally nobody uh, with the number 344th schedule, according to Ken Palm. Yep, we're not thinking, I guess, that the three, three and a half is a big deal to lay. So lay it with Elon. It's a great write up. Uh, two guys available over on Wager Talk as well as goldsheet.com. So make sure you check them out. And again, take advantage here. Tick tock, tick tock. Uh, the Cyber Monday deal, the opportunity for you to jump on board with any one of these guys or anybody at wagertalk.com for 90 days, get an all access package, less than $47 a week. You can't beat this here, guys. Right now, get three months for less than 47 bucks a week. That is every sport, every pick from your favorite handicapper here for one low price. It's a great opportunity to partner up through the holidays. And we want to thank you once again for hanging with us here on Wager Talk TV. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and the like button and uh, come back tomorrow for another edition of the college basketball tip off show, but we're not done. Hit that video on the screen right now. If it's head to head matchup info you want across all the sports, it's what we have. Click on that video and you'll get access to all the head to head matchups coming up this week across all the sports betting landscape. We appreciate the time. Best of luck with your place. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.